In this video, we will be making this Coptic stitch journal. We'll start by creating the signatures, then creating the cover, and we will bind it together with a wax linen thread utilizing the Coptic stitch. My name is Peg. I call my channel 2 Ocros Mixed Media. I have a very eclectic taste in the mixed media world. If you enjoy that, I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel. And of course, the notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. And the thumbs up helps promote my channel, and I love the comments. They jazz me up and, and make me want to create more content. So to start, we will be utilizing the 8.5 by 11 inch it's a Staples brand copy paper in the 20 pound format. So it's kind of the version of the hammer mill 20 pound, which is a good solid paper. I'm folding it in half. So each eight and a half by 11 inch sheet will be folded in half and I will be utilizing five pages to create a signature. Once I fold it into half, I'm securing that fold with my bone folder. Now I did uh, put these in my Fisker's cutting tool and cut off just a little less than an eighth of an inch on each end because when you put all of these together, the um, little depths will create somewhat of an offset in the pages, so I like to trim that up. Marking for my binding, half inch, a quarter of an inch in and one inch and a quarter in or an inch from that quarter inch mark. So you have five spots where we will be binding. When I have them all together I will take my craft pick and punch my first set of holes. I did put the six sheet of paper there and I'm setting that aside. I put an additional sheet of paper on the inside and now I will be utilizing that for my template. So I just cut that down into a usable strip. And now we'll place that over each and every signature. So my holes are identical. Now I did mark the top of my template. And I want, to, when I lay these signatures into place, I want to always lay them with that marked side identical on each. So they're all those holes are all in a very direct and straight line. Even though you're measuring a quarter of an inch from each side, maybe slightly off. So I am going to secure them with a clamp and now I'm measuring to determine what size I'm going to create the cover. To decorate the cover I'm utilizing the gel plate and I'm starting with a parchment colored ink or paint. Just going to put some boho stencil look on that uh, parchment and the rice paper is what I will be printing upon and the rice paper the type of rice paper I'm using I will put in the description because this is the best rice paper I've found it's very very durable the second coat of paint will be a gold and I wanted to get that on in kind of a ragged um, thick here, thin here type of mode, which you can see how it represents itself after the pull. This is a vintage photo distress oxide spray. Got it down a little thick, so I'm just mopping some of that up. But I want to kind of give this uh, book cover that distressed old age look. So that's why I'm using the vintage photo. And there you can see it creates a nice representation or ages it somewhat, if you will. So I have those two complete. And now to determine what else we need to do. So I think I want to add the stencil on the front cover and I'm utilizing that Vintage Photo Distress ink so that we have that same color consistency and the same type of element. So I am just putting that on my cosmetic sponge and dapping it through that stencil. So you want to make sure you don't get too much, but just make that stencil slightly wet and that Distress Oxide ink will stencil quite well. Now 
So now to get this put together, I'm utilizing the Yes paste and spreading it in a very thin layer with a hotel key card, credit card, whatever you, you use. But that makes it nice and even. And I can make sure that I'm getting it from uh, side to side. I'm putting my ruler up there and kind of positioning the center of that stencil so I don't get a cockeyed to one side. And there we go. So that is down. I'm just going to rub the back of that and make sure that we have good contact everywhere. I will just diagonal off each corner and wrap this like a present. And we'll come back with that Yes Paste to glue that down. And I really like this Yes Paste. I've used um, glitter glue, I've used fabric fusion, I've used a lot of different things to put book covers together, but I find that this gives just that real consistent, even spread of glue so you're not getting um, creases and bubbles where you don't want them. Now, in some applications, you may want that, but in this particular one, I did not. So there's the front cover, complete. And we'll do the same with the back cover, only I am not going to stencil on that. I'm going to leave that plain. And I don't think that you need to watch that boring gluing process once again, so there it is, complete. So we have the front cover and the back cover. Now we need to decorate the end sheets or the inside of the front and the inside of the back. I'm just cutting to size and we'll be getting out a couple of stencils and the gel press to create the end sheets. I want to start with that parchment. That was our background for the covers, and I want to be consistent on the inside. So I cut quite a few of these in sheets, just knowing that I would have some that I like, some I didn't like, so I want to do five or six, just to make sure I have two that I can utilize. So I started with the parchment. I shall lay down some gold and I'm going to stencil over that. Now, I used the same stencil uh, previously that I did on the outside cover, that Mandala stencil. Here I'm just using this graphic stencil, so I have a couple of different options to choose from. I think I like the one with the Mandala's best, so that is when I shall be putting inside the front and the back cover. Want to add some of that vintage photo distress spray to it to give it a little more of an aged look as well. Coming back and trimming the 1 4th inch corner on each. And once I get those trimmed, I'll ink around the outside edge to just further age it a bit and I'm utilizing the Vintage Photo ink as well as the Vintage Photo Distress, Distress Spray. And now to just glue those in. Pulling out that Yes Paste once again, and we'll stick this inside cover down. The same on the back. And we'll set that aside and let that glue set up and dry really nice. But one of the things that I have noticed when I was taking a look at this inside front and the inside back um, is if you look at each of those corners, I didn't um, trim that paper 
long enough on the sides. So some of the chipboard or the board that I utilized for the cover, which by the way was the uh, back of my watercolor paper sheet sheets that little piece of chipboard that that watercolor sheets come on that's what I utilized to create this cover I noticed that it, it was just not um, representing itself well it was looking um, just a little messy so to cover that up I'm going to create the corners out of a piece of white cardstock so I'm putting them in well, first, I'm going to cut an eight and a half inch by 11 sheet of cardstock in half, which will give me eight corners. Now let's put some color down on those corners. So back to the gel plate. And I want those to be darker because I want them to kind of stand out on the inside. So I'm pulling out a transparent burnt umber. And we'll just create eight corners that are dark. So I'm just making sure I get the paint on the edge of these sheets or on the edge of the two sheets of paper. Remember we're working with eight corners. A little more burnt umber. Corner five and six. Corners seven and eight. And this will make sense in just a second. So we have those all nice and brown. And to stay consistent, we'll come back with a little bit of gold. I'm going to cut them in half so they're easier to work with. So now we have four pieces, two corners each, or actually four corners each, so we have more corners, but we only need eight. Laying down some gold, that mandala stencil, and we'll just touch each corner to that. There we go. There's two done. There's four. five and six. I think we need a little more gold paint. And that completes seven and eight. We'll hit this one because it was a little light with the gold. So let's just clean that press up and we'll set it aside. We'll set that aside to dry a bit and then we can pull all that paint off of the off of the press. So now we have these corners. I'm going to put them in the Fisker's cutting tool. So I want them to be good and dry. If they're too damp, too wet, that's just going to tear the paper. So I want to make sure these are, are good and dry. I think those are going to look nice there. I want to determine about how far out I want to cut them. And I think we're looking at about an inch and a half. So we'll put the tip of the corner right at that inch and a half mark. I'm going to test one first to make sure I'm thinking correctly. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut this at that uh, inch and a half mark like I said before and that's going to work fine so I will cut all eight at that same configuration and glue them in to the corners on the inside front and the inside back cover. And now to get the holes poked in the book. So I have the template and I'm just going to lay that beside the cover 
I'm going to tape that down so it doesn't move on me. And I can see where those holes need to go. So I'm thinking I'll line this sheet of paper up. That tells me how far I want them in. But I decided that it's probably best to just measure each one a quarter of an inch in and poke the hole adjacent to the template or in line with the template. So there is my quarter inch mark right there. I'm going to mark it with my pen and make sure that it is lined up with my templated hole. And we'll do that down the entire cover. And now that we have those marked, we'll go ahead and punch those holes. And we'll do that on the front cover and the back cover. I want to make sure when we punch the holes in the back cover, I am marking those with the front cover so those holes are lined up specifically one to the other. Excuse my hands as I adjust my camera, but we are now ready to start the binding. So I have my wax thread on this curved needle and I'm going to take it through that first hole in the signature. I'm just going to pull that up so I have a little bit of a tail. And I have pulled off quite a, quite a bit of thread. Now I'm going to go underneath to the bottom of the front cover and pull that needle through. And then I'm going to wrap it around itself and go back through that hole. So you come out on the right side, you want to wrap around the thread from right to left and then come back through that signature. So we'll come back through there. And it'll be a little more clear on the second one, I believe. I'm going to pull that taut and go through that second hole in the signature. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come through the second hole down to the bottom of the first of the front cover and come through the front cover from front to back, wrap around that thread and back through the same hole. Now, there we're going through the cover and I kept this real slow. So you could hopefully see it. I'm pulling that taut going around that thread. See where that just goes right around the thread. Pull it tight, but before you pull it too tight, make sure that everything is where you want it because this kind of secures it into place. And now back through the signature hole. This is the most difficult part, or the first most <laughs> difficult thing in this Coptic stitch, is getting the cover bound to your signature. Then the signatures go really smooth. And then at the very end, the binding of the final book cover is a little tricky as well, but it's not, it's not bad. 
So now I'm going to speed it up and we'll continue through that middle hole, through the front to the back, wrap around that thread and go back through that same hole. There are also three or four different um, YouTube channels that do a very detailed Coptic stitch binding. And one of them is Paganol. There's another one by Bittermelon and another one by Sea Lemon. And I have watched all of those. And I've also have a book of binding that I have looked at the directions in the book. So... There's a lot of information out there. I will link some of the other videos in my description and let you do the same type of discovery that I did to, to learn this Coptic stitch binding. I don't have the camera set up to do a lot of the really graphic close-ups, um, and some of these other channels might, might be advantageous to you, so I will, I will link them below. Okay, now when we come to this final one right here, we're going to do the same wrap, but we're going to go through the hole in the next signature that we lay down. So I'll get this through the book. And there we have it through the book. And let's wrap it. We're just coming around that. We came on the right side. Now we're going to go from right to left. Now grab your next signature. And this is how you tie the signatures together. So go through the hole in the second signature. Now we're going to come back across and do the exact same thing in reverse but each time we do the wrap we're going to wrap underneath that stitch in the signature below us so we're just going down one so we'll go through this hole All right, and you know, you're just going to, going to complete that, and I guess I cut that off probably a little too soon, but I wanted to show you here where when you run out of thread, you just tie it off in between signature holes and re-thread your needle and, and start over. So... Let's see if we can get the what I was trying to show you. So I'm pulling it through that hole. This is where I was telling you you need to go through the signature that's right below the one that you're working on. So you see where we went through that signature and came back? This is what I cut off a little too early just before. So let's look at it again. You come through the inside hole in the signature, and then you're just looping around that signature right beneath the one you're working on. And that's why I like these curved needles, because you can just slide your needle in between those two pages push it in and move it to the left and it loops itself right around that thread. That's why those curved needles are so great. And I will also have links to all of the tools that I used 
below as well. I'll have it in my description and then perhaps I'll do a blog post and link you to the blog post where you can find all of those tools. And I will advise that if you purchase off of my Amazon links, I do make a slight commission. You do not pay more, but Amazon does pay those of us. Not a lot, of course, but every little bit helps. So we are getting ready to finish this book up with the book cover. So let me just flip to that here in a short moment. And what I have done is I have added the final signature is laying on top of all of those that are sewn in. And we are going to put the cover on now. To do so, we are going to secure that um, last signature that we sewed on. And we are going to come up through the top of that book cover come back down under the one underneath the last one sewn in, and then come back through that signature that we laid in between the cover and the stack of signatures that had been sewn. So that signature and that cover are going to go on at the same time. So we're putting our last signature on, we are bypassing that, going through the book, coming back down underneath the last signature sewn, looping around it, and then back through the hole in the signature, if that makes sense. So let's just take a look at it. We're coming through the cover right now. We're going down underneath. So we're two down, down underneath and wrapping around, coming back up through the signature. Okay, we'll come in, go through that middle hole. We're coming out. Now we're gonna go through the cover. Go two down, wrap around, and come up into and through that top signature. Okay, we've come through there. Now through that top signature. Of course, you want to thread, keep your needle threaded. Through that top signature. And this brings all of those threads to the inside of the book. So you don't have a bunch of mess in getting in getting that cover put on. So we'll come through the signature, up through the book cover, down and loop through the signature below, two down and back through that same hole, that top signature. But that loop is important or you'll just unthread yourself. And once you do the final one, you just knot that at the very end, knot it big enough to not go through, through your signature hole and maybe secure it with a little bit of glue, and you are in great shape. And the book is then complete. So this will be the final one through. And it's getting tight here because everything's secured, so it's a little tighter to, to get that needle through. Loop it around, back through that signature, tie it in a knot, and your book is now complete.
So here's the final look. The binding, the front and back, it opens flat. That's what I love about the Coptic stitch. And that completes, I am thinking about doing just a video on Coptic stitch binding and slow it down and really hone in on the video, maybe a couple of cameras, see if I can get that together. And I think that will help in future. I have four more books ready to be bound. So there's plenty of opportunity out there. These are the, that's the inside cover, the back. And once again, I want to thank you for stopping by, for sharing this time with me as we created this Coptic Stitch Bound journal. And I hope you will subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate the thumbs up. It does help promote my channel and your comments I really enjoy. It is what inspires me to continue to create content for my channel and keeps it going. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for supporting me. And I shall say bye for now.